Hi there, thanks for having me. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting to come back to a quantified self forum. Um, what's, what's interesting about the story is we started about two and a half years ago, and we did one of these about uh, two years ago at that point. And that particular month, we were trying to be a quantified self, uh, self tracking app called Daily Data. Um, and it would track all of your behavior and send it back to you, and except for two of my friends at MIT, nobody really cared. Um, and since then, we've transitioned. We, you know, we, we started working with the healthcare system, and it's been in a, a very interesting journey for us. So, um, so I'll talk about some of the things we've been doing so far. Um, so as I mentioned, the roots of uh, Chinjirayo are uh, based on the work I did uh, for my PhD thesis with, uh, with Sandy Pentland. Um, a lot of the work we were doing has historically been around modeling human behavior using large amounts of data primarily data collected from cell phones. Um, and so there is various publications based on that earlier. Um, and today we're a commercial platform that's being used by uh, various healthcare organizations, primarily hospital systems and to some extent with peers and, and plans. Um, now what's interesting, I know Quantified Self is a minority and, and that's unfortunate. Uh, but what's interesting though is the entire healthcare system's changing. Um, and that's happening with legislation and all sorts of other things at various levels. And the fundamental driver for all of this, and all so the I think this is where quantified self and the healthcare system intersect, is is these three different uh, pieces that everybody talks about. So the first one is um, you know this triple aim, which is better experience for patients. So for you as a patient, um, or uh, in the context of wellness. Um, as well as for your family, um, improved outcomes, so measuring clinical outcomes, understanding what's going on, um, and then ultimately both of those resulting in lower costs because patients are more engaged and also you can prevent things like readmissions and emergency room visits and so on. And so this is fundamentally a problem we're solving for everybody who's using our system today, which is uh, you're perhaps a large hospital system, you're, you're in the middle of this transition, you have thousands of patients, you're, you're doing this sort of population management thing, but how do you know which of those uh, 3,000 or 5,000 patients are the ones who need help today or this week? Um, and this is something we hear consistently consistent from nurses and doctors. And the reason this has been so hard uh, prior to this sort of explosion in sensors and data is uh, people have primarily relied on surveys. Um, and it's really hard to get self-reported data. And even if you do, about a third or half can be biased or incomplete or error prone. Um, and what's, what's interesting now, though, is um, is everybody's carrying one of these, right? And so um, your device is actually a, a really good diary of your life. It has location sensors, it has accelerometers, it has calling, texting data. Um, your phone knows when you unlock your device at 2 a.m. and start sending messages or, or keep doing that at 4 a.m. Um, and so there's a tremendous amount of information that exists on your phone that we at Gingerio tap to build a better model of, of what's going on with you as a person. Um, and so that includes things like calling, texting, location, accelerometer. Uh, I mean, obviously, privacy is a big aspect of this, so you have to be aware that this is being collected and processed, um, and, and, and it has to be with your permission. Um, and so, so what's the connection between all of this passive data and, and healthcare? Like, how do we how do we draw that line? Um, and here's an example of uh, of of how we actually connect those two. So, um, turns out based on all your behavior data, you can extract features, so machine learning features that um, are high level sort of representations of your quality of life or your behavior. Um, and these are two features are from a publication um, that I can point to later. Um, and so the one on the left is your communication pattern. And the one on your right is movement entropy. And entropy is a, a function of uh, essentially how unpredictable um, your movement is. Um, and the two bars, so the blues are normally asymptomatic days, um, and th th these are statistically significant results. So now what's, what's interesting here is DSM-4, which is the diagnostic manual for uh, depression, talks about how a person isolates themselves. But you see that same behavior in the way they communicate with others and in the way that they move about, um, and based on their device, which is in their pocket all the time. Um, and so it's really interesting that hundreds of such features which, which give you a sense of what's going on with this person uh, based on these passive data. So that particular example was based on uh, 320,000 hours of data, 3,000 symptom reports by about um, 100 users over the course of a year. Uh, we have numerous uh, such examples and also we're processing about 10x more data um, right now in our system. Um, so quick introduction on how it actually works. So you, uh, your doctor invites you or your nurse invites you to install this app on your phone. 
the app collects various uh, sensor data and we extract uh, features that represent how much you socialize or how active you are or how you're communicating with others. Um, and then we use all of that to generate a health status, um, which is essentially a, a probability of, of if something's different for you for that condition. Um, and we can export that to you or your family. We can export that to your provider. Um, and obviously in that whole process, uh, being very, uh, recognizing the need for privacy and, and HIPAA security and various other elements of that process. Um, as a patient, you only have to start the app once. You never have to start it up again if you don't want to. Um, and so we run in the background, we build these profiles of, of your behavior. Um, and there is a variety of information that you have access to. So things like, um, things like notifications, so if your institution wants you to answer questions, um, things like surveys, um, there may be pointers or health tips that they want to send out automatically so you can configure that. Um, and also insights based on your behavior. Um, and what's interesting is in, in contrast to sort of the conversation we were having earlier is these are all interesting, but we find that the, the sort of the principal driver is actually having a provider in the loop uh, for, for most of these patients. And that by itself is a huge, uh, a huge piece of why patients engage with the app. Um, and what this does is for nurses and doctors is it changes the way they interact with their patients. So today in most of healthcare, even for patients with chronic conditions where they've already been diagnosed, uh, the interaction is episodic. So you only see the patient maybe once every couple of months, once every three or four months. Um, and the problem is you never know what's going on between those visits um, until patients support it, but now you get a continuous picture. Um, and so you can fill in the gaps um, basically every day. So this is what the dashboard looks like for uh, nurses or doctors. You essentially come into work and you have a list of your patients. Um, you have sort of estimated health status for them based on how they've been behaving. Um, you can ask them surveys. You can uh, invite patients really easily. The entire process of getting started um, is, is, is a few minutes, um, unlike you know, most EHR systems or, or things like that, which often have a lot of integration pieces. Um, and so there's, so it's, we, we've tried to sort of make it really easy to use and, and get started for providers. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, about privacy as well as security. So uh, from a patient privacy perspective, I think it's, it's important that we adhere to, certain to a certain philosophy. So the first one is you have to opt in and you have to have control over your data. So how is it connected and how is it shared and things of that sort. Uh, but you also have to get value from your data. So anything that your provider sees, you should probably see at least that much, if not more. Um, and from a, from a health system perspective, obviously there's things like HIPAA, um, there's some draft guidelines by the FDA on mobile apps and they're constantly evolving. Um, but then also there's a lot of work we do working with our partners uh, since we work with hospital systems around um, how, we, how we interface with their systems and things like that. Um, so we've won numerous awards. I think at last count we're about half a million dollars in prize money. Um, assorted press and some amazing partners. Um, quick snapshot of the company. Um, so we're, we've raised a couple of rounds of financing. Um, well, what's interesting about our company is we are essentially a data company posing as a health company. Um, and so most of our team is uh, people from places like Google and Microsoft and a lot of uh, sort of machine learning PhDs and things of that sort. Um, another thing we really care about is just user experience and design. And so hopefully you saw that in some of the screenshots, but we think it's one of those areas that's been uh, ignored in, in healthcare. Um, and it's, it's just really low hanging fruit because uh, I feel like a lot of, uh, a lot of applications in healthcare are not really design focused. Um, and our latest round of investors uh, include Vinod Kosla, who you might have heard, he's often talking about um, how sensors and data will replace uh, doctors. I actually don't pres prescribe to that belief. I think the healthcare system has to be part of that transition. Um, cool, so that's what we do at Chinjir.io. Um, it's a way of collecting and analyzing population data at scale, and our goal is to help uh, institutions um, manage their patients better and also patients have a better experience. Thank you.